Hey, how we doing? Hey, Fred, how are you? Oh, I think you're on mute. I always do that. I'm good. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm sorry I'm not on camera. I'm just inhaling a little bit of dinner. No problem. Uh, well, you, you know, just sit, put mine to the side. I'll get it later. <laughs> I don't know if you want what I'm eating, Fred. It, this, is, uh, this is not... Top flight cuisine over here on Clarkson Avenue. Not not in my place. All right. It's, it's better than no cuisine over on Montgomery. So, you know. <laughs> That's true. That's true. How's your week been so far? It's been okay. You know, okay so far. I can't complain too much. Yeah, good. All right. Meanwhile, let me see if I can get my audio switched over. Cool. Welcome, Teresa. Welcome, Pierre. Uh, Yuning, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Hi, okay. everyone. Welcome mm -hmm. back. Hi, real quick, Christian. Uh, Yuning is actually one of our um, NY Fellows, she's actually helping our office uh, gather some data for a particular, uh, uh, I believe it's a thesis or project she's working over the summer. Yuning, you could of course feel free to um, give Christian an explanation of what you're doing here for our office, okay? Yeah, sure, should I, should I do it really quickly now or wait for uh, folks to join? Uh, uh, it, one Christian, yeah, Christian, go ahead, sorry. It's okay, I mean, there'll be time Dante shot me a quick message. So definitely there'll be time during public discussion, but yeah. I mean, you're welcome to just say hello while we wait for <laughs> more folks to come on. It's up to you. Uh, sure, I think I'll just wait until then. Um, so we don't take, I so I don't take too much time. I see we have a lot of items on the agenda and I want you to be able to go through those before I get to my questions. And thank you so so much for pro providing the time and space. Sure, no problem. Happy you're here. Yeah. Um, Matthew won't be able to join tonight. Uh, I don't know about Vivia or Martina. I know Teresa's on, which is great. Uh, and then our latest member, Kendall, said he'll be able to join at 
Uh, Mart um, Teresa, have you heard anything from Martina? No, no, I I haven't. I haven't heard from her. Okay. All right. Well, um, she's usually here. It might just be a few minutes. I think in terms of quorum between you, Teresa, Martina, Kendall, Matthew, myself, and Vivia, uh, that's six. Fred, are you, are you, how does it work at when you're chair of the whole, of the whole board? Are you a voting member? Of, do you count towards? No, I, no, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not counting towards quorum on your meetings. Okay. So then we need four folks. Kendall should be on later. And I hope that Martina will be on later as well. Um, I will shoot her a quick message, but then we can go ahead and get started. Just bear with me another minute, please. Okay, we have a few more folks who have just joined. Let's see John and Chalita. That's great. Give me just one second. Right. Thanks everybody for joining. Welcome to the meeting for the um, Environmental Protection Committee and CB9. Before we go ahead and, and commence this meeting, Khalid, I know that Kendall was looking to receive the connection information. Kendall, who was recently added to our committee. Is that something that you'd be able to forward to him? Give me one second, yes. Okay, thanks so much. And um, I will take notes at least until the note taker arrives, which is Martina tonight. Uh, so the time is now 7.07 .07 and the meeting, it, we are starting the meeting now at this time. Yes, Khalid, I think you're on mute. I'm sorry. No, I'm just talking to myself going through my process. <laughs> okay. No, sorry. No, no worries. Okay, great. So let's dive into it. We have a pretty full agenda. I think tonight we're going to go until 830. I would like to get everybody out of here before then. Um, just in terms of announcements, the main takeaway is that we proposed our letter to council persons last month during the general board meeting and we got some feedback essentially uh the general the, the board would like to have wanted to have more consultation i see we have two or three folks here who uh have not have not been here uh as regularly so that's great that's what we want we want more folks to come to the meeting so thank you for joining and i i hope that we have more board members continuing to join because that's very helpful so um that was the main that was the main piece of feedback board members wanted to consult more 
on the letter to council persons and they had some specific feedback. I'm going to, we'll dive into that later on in the agenda. We have 20 minutes devoted to this. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it now, but I would just like to, as part of our, our typical agenda, uh, remind all of our committee members of some of our meeting norms and then and the purpose of while we're here. The purpose of while we're here is really to come together and uh, collaborate and work together for a vision, to implement a vision for our community that protects the environment in our community, uh, handles the sanitation issue, and also helps mitigate the effects of climate change. That is the purpose of the Environmental Protection Committee. Uh, and in terms of our meeting norms, we, we agreed in the first meeting to uh, respect all committee members, even if we disagree with them, to use the raise hand function, which will be important tonight as we have more folks than usual. So please raise your hand and I'm happy to call on you to speak. And then also uh, for those folks that typically are in the back of the virtual room, we invite them to take a step forward and participate and lean into this meeting and share their ideas. And for those folks that are typically in the front of the virtual room who talk a lot, we invite you to take a step back this evening and uh, listen to uh, keep your ears open to what some of our committee members are saying. So uh, that's part of our meeting norms. And I would just like to acknowledge that as we begin. So moving forward then to agenda point number two, uh, review of previous action items. The action items from the last meeting include committee members going online to the uh, participatory budgeting site of Rita Joseph, of Council Member Joseph, excuse me, and endorsing and commenting on our project to implement rain gardens. That was something we asked all committee members to do. And then on my end to send this uh, get this letter to council members up to the next stage, which is what we did and we discussed in that last general board meeting. I also committed to inviting Superintendent Rice to our next meeting. And I, I must confess, I didn't have time to do that. The letter really took up a lot of time. So I was not able to, to do that um, in, a, in advance of this meeting. But I think that we have some key items on the agenda between taking another look at this letter and the spring environmental fair so that we'll still have plenty to uh, discuss this evening. Um, we also, Matt is not here, so I won't speak to his action item too much. And then Teresa, uh, we asked if you could fill out the budget request form and uh, include the date and location of the in spring environmental fair. So we have a, an agenda point for that, Teresa, later on in terms of an, a broader update. But just in short, I know you had reached out to me in terms of the trouble you were having downloading the, um, the budget request form. Is that something that you were able to troubleshoot? Yeah, it seemed, I spent quite a lot of time on it, honestly. And it seems as though it's, I've been able to open it in the, in the numbers application on my laptop. I, I couldn't open or type in it for, but actually just today, within the last hour, you know, I kept struggling with it. I managed to open it and be able to start typing in it. So that's progress. And hopefully I could do that and send it off. I would say that with my struggle, that other people may have the same struggle in the future and there should be a, a way that's a little bit easier. I mean, I even tried to print it and fill it out, but when it printed, I had, I, this is what I got. It was so small, I couldn't, I couldn't really, I couldn't write in it. You know, it's too small to really write in. So if there were a way for, just to help save other people this in the future, and, I don't know how else I could have opened it if, you know, that's why I called Mia and she said, print it out and write in it. And that didn't really work. And I wrote to her again, but um, I wasn't able to see if she had responded to me. So I'm gonna do it, I'm working on it, but I didn't think it would be so difficult. I hear you. 
Well, thank you for continuing to work on it. And just in summary, it sounds like in the last hour, you were able to download it and open it on numbers. Yeah, I opened it on numbers and I was able to type on it, but you know, I was in another meeting too, right before this. So okay. I, I thank you for uh, helping me persevere with it. No worries, teamwork. It should be a little easier, really. I thought it was just going to be like, you know, I didn't realize it was something you had to type inside. I thought it would be something on, online that, you know, could be shared, like more like a, a Google sheet, sheet or something. Yeah, understood. Well, uh, I'm glad that you were able to open it through numbers. That application is just like Excel, so you can fill it out that way. If you have more questions, though, uh, I would encourage you to do as you just did, reach out to the district managers and staff working in the CB9 office so that they can assist. Yeah, I would like to do it in Excel, but I can't figure out how to do that. Yeah, is your laptop a Mac or, a, or it's not? It's a Mac. Okay, so Macs don't have Excel. Macs typically just have numbers, so that's part of it. But the format translates over into numbers, so it'll show up just fine, and then you can save it on there and, and send it back to the district managers once it's completed. Hopefully, I might send it to you to test it out to see if you could see it first. Okay, that's sure. Happy to. Uh, Fred? Yeah, no, I was just going to say along those lines, I think when it was developed, the, there was a spreadsheet version. There should also be a Google Forms version of it as well. Um, so when you call the office, let them know that you're having an issue. They might be able to send you the link for the Google Forms version. So you can be, you should be able to submit it that way as well. But the office, the, the district office will be able to help you out with that. That's helpful. Thank you, Fred. All right, everybody. So let's move forward then. The next point on the agenda is point number three, which is about planning of rain gardens. That's really the issue that Matt is championing, but he's unable to attend this evening because of uh, unexpected child care duties. So I'm going to skip that. I'm going to go to uh, what will take up uh, 20, the, I expect the next 20 minutes of our meeting or so. And that's the letter to council persons and the 10 locations of trash cans. So I just want to give uh, mm -hmm. a little bit of a overview in terms of where we are with this letter. Uh, we presented it last month in the general board meeting to the board and we had anticipated that the board would vote on the letter. The board had a number of questions on the letter and also had not read the, some of them had not read the letter before it was, before it was discussed that evening. So one of the takeaways I took from that meeting is it's important that we as a committee sent all of our documents together in one place and I'm going to ask our district managers if they would be kind enough to send out the letter in a separate email prior to the meeting. That way it's fully visible for board members because we got a lot of board members saying they hadn't seen the letter, they hadn't seen the letter. The letter was there, it was just one of many attachments. So that's one takeaway uh, that I drew from that meeting. The other takeaway is that there, we had dra drafted this letter to start a conversation with council members, but I understand now after the general board meeting that we really need to, to be sp very specific and concise in our letter. So there were a few concerns that were brought on that I sought to address in the letter while also simplifying the letter. And I just sent that, uh, well, the district manager sent it earlier this week as part of the agenda, or excuse me, last week. And then I also sent it just a few minutes ago to the committee uh, as part of a larger attachment. I'm gonna pull it up on my computer. I would invite everybody to pull it up on your computer as well so that you see what it is that we're looking at. Before I do that, I just wanna go to uh, Ms. Mays. Uh, Charlita, please let me know if I pronounced your first name correctly. Uh, yes, you did. Hi, good evening, everyone. This is my first time um, <clears throat> first time at this committee meeting and I was not at the, um, the larger community board meeting. 
but I learned about it because my husband's on the community board and the issue of the litter and the trash is very near and dear to my heart. So I, he told me about the meeting and I wanted to join. All of that to say, I am not on your committee list, so I did not get this letter and um, I have not seen it. So if you're gonna share it on your screen, that's great because I don't know what the contents of it are. Thanks for raising that. And thank you for joining this evening. I don't think I have the capability of sharing. Okay, hold on, let me take a look here. And I don't know how to unraise my hand, so. <laughs> but. Oh, wait, lower hand. There you go. Um. Sorry, uh, is there something you'd like to add, Teresa? I, I want to make sure that we're going in order. We definitely said we could share screen. We're not allowed to use share chat for in CV non meetings, but we are allowed to screen share. And Khalid definitely said there was a way. And yes. I don't, I, I, I don't know how. I mean, if it's a twenty-page letter, that's one thing. If it's you know short enough, maybe you could just read it or summarize it. I know you mentioned something about ten trash cans. Like I, I don't know if there's just a top line. Here's what the letter said. And here's how we've revised it. Yeah, there, I there is a bit of a top line. Yeah, um, Khalid, would you be able to to send the letter to Charlita? Yes, I can. Hold on for one second. Please. Okay, thank you so much. C can we post it on the screen? Because I I can't. I'm just on my phone, so I can't. Well, I'll I, pull it up and I'll screen share. Hold on for one second. Thank you. Please do continue to reuse the raise hand function this evening. That'll make things easier in terms of keeping track of order. As Khalid is pulling it up on a screen share and as he sends it to Charlita, uh, I'll just flag. Does he have my info? Sorry, does he, he, you said he's going to send it to me, but how? Does he have my information? <laughs> Khalid, do you have her information? I mean, I don't know. I mean, he may. Charlie, I, 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 I don't, Charlie, know, I don't know if I have your email. Um, have I don't think email? so. I would. I mean, that would be interesting. <laughs> yes. So I, I will. I will pull up the, uh, the the letter right now for my screen sharing, and then Charlie, I'll get your email um, after this meeting, and I can send it to you yeah. if you'd like. And, and I'm happy to give it out. It's charlita at gmail.com. So my first name. As your name's right here. here. Yeah. Right, so at I'll, gmail. I'll that to you. Okay, you got it. Okay, so I'm, let, for the sake of time, I'm gonna highlight a couple of the significant changes or, or changes. They're not, some of them are significant, some of them are not. Uh, there was a discussion last month about where would these more modernized containers go? And I understand that uh, our residents in the district have a, a don't wanna lose parking. Um, that being said, we're the Environmental Protection Committee and our job is to protect and preserve our environment. We're not in the business of protecting parking spaces. However, there's a middle ground here. And so I revised the letter to say that we would like to propose piloting this modernized trash collection program to install on-street containers, thank you, on-street containers primarily in commercial corridors. That way we distinguish where this stuff would go and so yes it would still it would be on the street and it would take up some parking but it would take up parking in front of businesses not in front of residences so those of us that have cars uh that live in the district you would not be significantly impacted by this the second thing i'd like to highlight is a little bit further down if we can uh thank you khalid is uh, something that uh, one of the board members brought up, which is, okay, how would this impact alternate street side parking? And we said that our letter is not calling for the return of two days a week alternate street side parking. Uh, there are many in the district, including, uh, well, I would say many in the district 
who would like to see uh, alternate street side parking be enforced two days a week. Uh, but that letter is not calling for this. So I just added the word existing rules and regulations to really hone in on the fact that we are not asking for uh, enforcement two days a week. We're just asking for enforcement of existing regulations, which is currently one day a week. Uh, the other thing, thanks, you can keep going down. Uh, the other thing is the locations. Do we have that in this version? We might not. Okay. Um, one question I have for Fred is, so those were the two, two main changes in the letter. And then there's a, a change in terms of, uh, of the locate, not change, but a, uh, I have the exact locations of the trash receptacle replacement areas. So I'll share that in a minute, but I just have a question for the chair of, of CB9, which is we originally understood or thought that this letter would come from the committee. And so uh, Martina is championing this issue and I'm supporting her with that. Uh, but uh, should this letter come from CB9 as a whole? And I welcome the chair's clarification because we have it currently signed as chair of EP committee and chair of and uh, committee public member. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for that. Um, actually, that, 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 that's correct. In terms of the process, um, the way the work goes through the committees is that the committees vet the, the, would vet the ideas and create the recommendations. Uh, you would vote on those as the recommendations you have for the, the entire board. It would go through the executive committee at that point. Um, and, you know, if we had any other, you know, if we had any other recommendations, either we would say, okay, well, listen, you know, you may want to consider this and we give it back to you. Or we'll say, okay, it looks good on this side and forward to the full board for consideration. Uh, so once the full board, you know, but, but it is up to the full board to actually adopt it. Um, and then once adopted, so then the letter would go from um, the board, recognizing that this is stemming from a recommendation made by the uh, Environmental Protection Committee. But it would be a board recommendation once adopted. Got it. So in terms of signing the letter, what do you recommend, Fred? Do you recommend signing it having it be signed by this by CB9 or having it be signed by the Environmental Protection Committee? It will be signed off by CB9. Okay, got it. So that's very helpful, thank you. Um, and then I'm gonna just send this, I'm gonna send this to you Khalid now, uh, and, um, the version that has the version that has the trash locations. And then, um, Teresa, I'll get to your question, but I just wanna finish presenting here. Okay. Khalid, I just sent it to you. When it does come through your email, would you be able to pull it up and share the your screen again? Will do. Okay, thanks so much. So that's the letter, those are the main updates. And then as part of the package, I've now included uh, a mock-up of what the modernized container solution looks like so that all the board could see that. Uh, and then I've also included uh, the proposed trash receptacle that the community board, that we would ask CB9 to uh, install or to purchase uh, across the district. And I've included a picture of the old, what I've been calling the old school wire trash receptacle uh, so that we can see what would be replaced. And then we have 10 locations that those locations did not change. Uh, the only thing is that I specified where the two, where the two out of the 10 locations currently don't have a container so that we're all on the same page with that. Um, the last thing I would say is that in the letter itself, there was a request originally where we ask the council members, where we, where we say to the council members that we would like to see a replacement of the older wire trash receptacles with the new uh, closed container receptacles. I would recommend that we take that out because 
we want to keep this letter as focused and simple as possible. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, if we're going to ask CB9 to purchase 10 of these new containers, thank you, Khalid. And you can see right there, that's it. I would recommend that we take, we strike this part out of the letter because A, we don't want to, um, we want to keep the letter as simple as possible and the messaging as simple as possible. And then B, as part of the resolution that we passed or the motion that we passed last month, we also proposed having CB9 purchase 10 of these newer uh, containers so that they could then be replacing the old school, old wire trash receptacles. So if CB9 is gonna do that, then there's no need for us to also uh, ask council persons to do that as well in this specific letter. I would really like to make this letter focused on just the pilot program. So with all that being said, um, and Khalid, can you go down a little bit more? So they, so the folks can see what, so this is what the pilot would look like. It would be on street, there would be plants on both sides. And this would prevent the trash from going on the sidewalk. Uh, and it would also contain the trash so that the trash is not going all over the street and clogging catch basins after a rain. And then this is the trash receptacle that we propose CB9 purchase. You'll see that it says Brooklyn Community Board 9 supports a clean Brooklyn. That's because CB9 purchased some of these last year. So we're just simply asking for 10 additional receptacles just like this that would then replace uh, the ones below this. If you can scroll down, thank you. So we're asking to replace these old ones with the one above and, and then uh, also send out this letter. So all that being said, I'd like to take, I'd like to open up the floor for questions and comments and uh, start with Teresa and then Fred. Um, hi, I just, one thing that I remember from the meeting is there were uh, several people that said, made concerns knowing like, what about us? Why don't we get one? What about my neighborhood? And one thing I think that addressing the trash issue is that people need to request cans sometimes on their corner, whether it be one of these newer fancier models or just a trash can at all. I know in uh, on our corner, Sullivan and uh, Rogers, our trash can was taken away from us for a number of years. And I came to the community board. I wrote a lot of letters. Martina and I got to be friends actually because of this trash can thing, like not having a trash can, a trash can taken away on the corner caused a lot of trash in throughout the whole neighborhood. So we pressured and just to get a trash can at all was a lot of work. And they, I think on, when we have this new website, I would like us to have a section and to bring it up when we talk to the community board about how people can get a trash can on a corner where they wanna have a trash can. Be it the old school trash can, I think is better than no trash can even having two trash cans and in Park Slope, some neighborhoods, their uh, commercial district has three trash cans. So I would like to have a program like that for equity on our side of the park as well. Three trash cans, people be able to request their own trash can, want it and make that easy for them to find that information because it's really not easy to find. So it's not really as easy as calling 311. So I would like a section on our, like a web page for us, like some other community boards have for our EP section to have that address and address it. Maybe not in the, it could be addressed in this letter, I guess, but just in general to have a trash can is really makes a big difference in a neighborhood. Yeah, totally. I think you're right. I think trash cans do make a big difference in the neighborhood and Part of our challenge is figuring out how to uh, get the information to the right folks so that our community feels empowered 
to make change on our on behalf of ourselves and our blocks and and the larger neighborhood. So I appreciate that suggestion. Thank you, Fred. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, no, I just want to reiterate the point that uh, that Ms. Westerdahl brought up. There were members who had concerns in terms of the locations tend to be more towards the the western end of the district. Uh, you know the, the the western end of the district. So I think the northeastern part. Um, there were there is no. I don't think there were any uh, mentions of any trash cans over there. So a few of the board members may have some suggestions. So I, I would just probably offer that maybe um, you be prepared to just you know you know we can send out a note just saying that listen if there are any uh, other locations or alternate locations that they can advise that and that's something we could add either through the exec or at the board meeting as well. So it might be possible that it might get amended. Uh, that might be the suggestion. Uh, part two, I just also wanted to make the, the, the notation and um, with respect to the garbage cans. CB9, last year, we did purchase a number of uh, trash cans. Uh, that was done because there were excess funds in the district um, office budget. Um, due to the fact that there were some, you know, we had hired the, the district manager a little bit later. Um, because we were operating remotely, there were some cost avoidances that, you know, we had some money that we were able to do some things with. That is not likely going to be the situation this year. So the, the budget office, you know, and the district manager could probably speak to it more directly. Uh, I wouldn't anticipate the board would be able to actually make the purchase of the cans. So it, with that respect, it's probably better to make that as an ask to the council members actually to re-include that as part of the letter, because either they could do it as part of discretionary funds, or they can actually uh, start trying to fight for that as part of the budgetary process in terms of, you know, for capital improvements, um, we would request uh, 10 additional, you know, whatever the number is of, of camps in the district. Um, I would also probably say that perhaps one way, one thing you add in the letter is, um, you know, if, if you perceive an advantage to having the other cans, that's probably helpful as well. Because uh, on the one hand, the other cans are probably more expensive, but I mean, if, if there's a perceived um, benefit to having the, the closed containers, they're, you know, either they're aesthetically better or they, they really just keep the rodents out, then perhaps that is the argument that should be made and we should get the newer, the newer cans if possible. Okay. That's helpful. Yeah, I mean, happy to amend the letter in terms of locations for trash cans, but I do want to emphasize for everyone on the call that this is really where the work is getting done. And this is where we, we uh, gave folks the opportunity to do the survey in their neighborhoods and see where it was that were the high traffic areas that we needed to replace the trash cans. And uh, in order to hit that Northeast corner, um, we need folks to show up to this meeting and share that on the front end so, so that we can incorporate it in the beginning. Amending it is totally an option too, but I think it's helpful for us to have greater participation here uh, in the meeting. Uh, and we, we tried to really pick locations that were both north and south of Empire Boulevard because CB9 is pretty much split between those two areas. So just a comment, but uh, certainly can amend it as needed. I don't know who was next, if that was Charlita or Maxine. Um, so whoever was next, please go ahead. Um, I have an, a number of, of questions. So I don't know, Maxine may want to go. And a lot of my questions are because, again, I'm new to this. So, and I can't read the letter and pay attention to you at the same time. So one, I don't know what the 10 locations are. Um, I don't know if they're set out in the letter. So that's one question I have. And um, the other question I have is, the in the mock-up that you sent, which I don't see in the in the communications, that I just received via email, but the the one with the planters, you you mean ten of those is what the ask is for? No, oh, the ask is for to, and the and the with other stakeholders like DSNY and DOT, they would determine where would be the best location for those more modernized trash collection units, 
the ask in terms of the 10 locations is to change out the 10 old school trash receptacles and replace it with uh, trash receptacles that CB9 purchased, similar to the one CB9 purchased last year. So that picture with the two plants on both sides, that's, that's for council members to take that on board and pilot this in our district in front of commercial businesses, primarily commercial businesses. But that's not the 10, that's not the 10. No. So the thing that you said you were striking, maybe I'm just not following this. I thought you were striking the thing about asking them to replace trash cans. existing. Yeah, and that's something I'd like to hear more from the chair about actually, which is the, uh, the budget, budgetary constraints for this year. I know that each one of these trash cans costs just under $900, but do we have a better sense of what the budgetary constraints will look like exactly? And I'm sorry, just before we answer that, the, the answer to my question, mm -hmm. it, are you, is, is the ask 10 entirely new trash cans in entirely new locations? And we are, you're striking the piece that asked them to replace the old trash cans. I'm just, I'm not understanding what the ask is and I apologize because you know I wasn't, I wasn't there, but there are a couple different things going on. There's the modern trash can ask, right? And then there seems to be a new trash can ask and I'm just trying to orient it, orient myself to each of the buckets of things that are on the table. Yeah. The, the primary message in the letter is asking for a modernized container solution for commercial businesses. That is different from the 10 locations that we would like to replace old trash receptacles. In those 10 locations, we would like to replace the old trash receptacles and put them with receptacles that contain the garbage uh, more and also uh, make it so that the garbage is invisible when you're, isn't visible when you're walking by. Um, to be a, even a little bit more specific, on eight out of those 10 locations, there currently is already an old, old school uh, trash receptacle. But in two out of those 10 locations, they're just simply high traffic areas that there's no garbage can at all. And so we're asking uh, to place garbage cans there and have them be the same type that we, we would ask for in the, same, in the other eight locations. Are there already trash cans, this modern trash can, do they exist in some other neighborhood right now or are we the first people to ask for this? For the trash, the trash cans? No, 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 the modern oh, the planter thing that you... Yeah, so that's something that, they're, that they are piloting. Uh, DOT is piloting that with DSNY and commercial business districts and a council member who just got elected in the west side in Chelsea of Manhattan, in Manhattan, he has been calling to pilot this in his district. Um, and he actually wants to expand it to residential areas, but I'm, I'm cognizant of the fact that in our last meeting, folks had concerns about losing parking. So that's so why. So do they exist anywhere right now in any neighborhood? No. They're commercial, no, okay. No, no they're being piloted. They're, they, they're starting to exist. Okay, sorry, I'll let other people get an opportunity. Thank you for- The, the planning for a pilot is underway, uh, but it, it's gonna take a long time before it exists. A long time, meaning like, I mean, not that you would know, but like three months, a year. Yeah, I, I'd put it out maybe nine months to a year minimum. And the, as Chris said, the target right now is in Hell's Kitchen, Chelsea, that's been uh, playing with this idea for a couple of years and has advanced it to the idea of, to the stage of uh, getting DSNY and DOT to work together on a, on a clean curbs uh, project. Thank you. Sorry okay. to jump in, Chris, but uh, I'm just going to be helpful here. No, that was helpful. Thank you, Kendall. Appreciate it. Uh, Maxine? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, first, I'd like to commend the committee for the work that you're doing. It's a pleasure to be here and seeing this work get done, especially in the environment that we find ourselves with the increase of gun uh, violence. Cleanliness, I believe, is a culture 
that we should start from. I believe it's so important. I think people have a different mindset when things are clean. So moving on, also I'd like to comment on um, the last meeting where there were all the naysayers. And as Christian says, and I agree, that it would be wonderful to have some of those folks join us. And it's so unfortunate. I left the uh, Europe committee meeting because I wanted to be here. I don't understand why Mondays are open, why we have this committee meeting and the Europe at the same time. Possibly that may help other fo folks join in because the work you're doing here is, is, is wonderful. So first, again, I would like to commend Second, what, what about Mondays? Maybe the chair will speak to that. And also my question to the committee is, in the letter, um, I, I, was the sanitation, was Chief uh, Rice include? Will we forward him or CC them? Have we met with the sanitation? How, how will the sanitation be incorporated in that letter? Thanks very much, Maxine. And, and grateful for your participation. And uh, I know that the meetings, times and dates have been brought up before. So I, I'm not gonna spend, speak to it here, but if the chair would like to speak to it, um, I'd be more than happy to yield the floor to him on that. In terms of Super Rice, uh, yeah, Super Rice was the first person we met with. Uh, just to have a courtesy call and an introductory call, and understand from him what some of the uh, some of the issues are as he sees it. Um, we, as of now, uh, it, he would not be copied on the letter. Uh, but I think that's actually a good idea. Maybe he should be copied on the letter. I think so. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I did. You guys vote on it. I just think it's he should be included because he's helped us. He's done such major improvements that I and my uh, community have seen. I like to keep him in the loop. Mm -hmm. No, that's a that's a good point. I appreciate that. And I just have one more question for you, Christian, mm -hmm. or for the other committee, and that is um, the enforcement on the alternate side enforced as it has existed. I agree, because folks go crazy about their parking spaces. <laughs> but um, also, my question is, I would like more enforcement for the commercial businesses. I'm old and I remember storekeepers in the mornings when they come in, they clean the sidewalk, they clean the curb. So I would love to have that enforced, to have the commercial businesses clean their sidewalk. And I'm not too sure of the law and on the curb. I believe the many 311s and the law that I research is eight inches from the curb. Does that mean that the commercial business has to clean from the sidewalk curve to the tar eight inches? And if so, they should, if not. And uh, again, I would like to include that as enforcement. Clean the front, the privilege of doing business in our neighborhood and in Brooklyn, I think that's a small price to pay to keep your front clean and certainly for your customers. I hope everybody agrees. Thank you. For Thank that. you. Thank you for listening. Sure. Thank you for that comment. Um, Kendall. <clears throat> Hi. Well, uh, I guess I'll start with a word of introduction since I'm sorry to join late, but this is my first meeting of the committee. Uh, I'm a longtime resident of the Prospect Lefferts Garden section of the district. Um, had uh, uh, previously worked at the Department of Sanitation in the launch of the recycling program 30 years ago and have a consulting practice uh, focused in the field uh, locally, nationally, and a little bit in Canada. Uh, I have been an active member of the Brooklyn Solid Waste Advisory Board for a very long time, and uh, for a while chaired the Citywide Recycling Advisory Board as well, So, and still have a fair amount of interaction with, uh, with DSNY. So pleased to join you. Hopefully I can uh, contribute um, with um, information and perspective and, uh, and ideas from uh, from the from that work. Um, I have the same initial question, I guess, as Maxine is about the dialogue with the uh, the, the sanitation district uh, chief. Uh, I don't know him personally, but uh, but uh, I'm, I'm glad to hear that you've had some dialogue and reviewed the results of the survey uh, to get their input as to where they think there are 
uh, hot spots in the district. I know the street baskets are always controversial because they tend to be uh, collectors of trash from outside the neighborhoods, uh, from illegal dumping by you know people that pass by with their uh, with their uh, waste and drop it in, and that's often why they get pulled uh, pulled off the the corners. So navigating and negotiating that with the you know the district super is uh, always uh, you know part of uh, the place to start. I think before taking it to the uh, the level of uh, elected officials. Uh, so I'll start with that. On the um, on the on the trash corrals, I guess is the the term I would I would give them. Did you just I just okay. I thought I lost you there for a minute. The trash corrals, the conceptual work for that's actually being done by a woman that lives in the district, Don Sterling. Um, uh, so I don't know if we've had a chance to talk with her, but Claire Mifflin has really been the uh, 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 proselytizer and the designer about those uh, corral systems. Uh, and as I said earlier, there none of them exist. They're all just on paper right now, but the city's trying to figure out how to deploy those and where they make sense and to see how they work. Um, and then finally, on the ASP, um, you know, there are some sections of the district that have four times a week ASP, and I live in one of those areas. So our uh, COVID ASP has been reduced to twice a week. So I just, I'm not, not sure how much of the rest of the district has uh, four days a week uh, or, or just two, but that uh, should be something that uh, is taken into consideration as well. Thanks, Kendall. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Kendall, and we're, we're glad that you're here. And uh, in terms of the regulations for alternate street side parking, uh, just to clarify that we were not asking for more uh, enforcement of the old or, or enforcement of the old ASP laws. We're looking for just existing enforcement uh, because even that sometimes we have some trouble, whether it's uh, two days a week or four days a week. Um, but I think this is a really, this is a, a reoccurring theme with, with super rights. And I think it's a great idea. You know, as I mentioned, he was the first person we spoke to just when we got together as a committee, I reached out to him and had a meeting with him and I've had uh, a second meeting with him and, and NYPD and, and others as well. Uh, and I did just reach out to him earlier this week to get his take specifically on this, but I think it's a, it's a specifically on this proposal, but I think it's, it's an important point and we want to loop him in and uh, make sure that he's comfortable with the idea. So I'm happy to continue uh, down that path. I think in terms of an immediate step in drafting this letter, we should copy him on that letter. Uh, so I've, I've just added that to the draft. Does he uh, have any discretion about the deployment of street baskets? That's a good question. How many, how many and where? I don't think that he does, but does, does the chair or does uh, Khalid have any insight into that? Christian, please repeat that, I'm sorry. Does the uh, district uh, chief have any discretion over the number and deployment of street baskets? Uh, if you're talking about uh, DSNY superintendent, is that who you yes. mean? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, then I don't believe so. And I, I can't really confirm that for you either. I don't want to put words into his mouth. I will only just say that, especially with the set of cans that we had put out already in the previous uh, round, that was, always, that was also reviewed with superintendent Rice. So I believe if anything, they would advise us on what their capabilities are in terms of their trash pickup schedule and what can be accommodated. But I, I, I couldn't tell you what he would say specifically. I couldn't give you those words, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. My, my thought on that is they may, is they may advise as well, or if there is a reason why they can't be on a certain corner, they may, they may advise about that. It, you know, I guess if it's, if it's too close to a, you know, I'm just, you know, if there's reasons why they can't be on certain corners, they would probably advise on that. But to the point Khalid made, I think that, uh, yeah, they would probably, we would do it in consultation with them. We would come with the proposals. Uh, obviously, you know, we can't, you know, they would have to, to make sure that they have the capacity to actually be able to service all of those as well. 
but that's part of the conversation in terms of, you know, I think once you've decided having that conversation with Superintendent Rice um, and figuring out what, the, what the, the community can support. Yeah, I mean, Fred, as you probably know, there's always been a, a historically a budget dance over street baskets, right? Because it's the one thing that members can ask for uh, and they can put their names on it in the old day, uh, the old style at least. And so it was a signage opportunity for them and they could get credit for bringing, you know, 20 more, 30 more, whatever the number was. Uh, so. Absolutely. There's a, there's a few CB9 brand ones out there too, <laughs> which is actually one of the questions, but. Yeah. Uh, folks, I want to be mindful of our time and I, I do want to try to get us all out of here at 8.30. We have other things on the agenda. So I'm gonna take a, a question. Teresa, is this is your hand raised from before or is this a new comment or question? Oh, uh, it, it's been up for a little while. Thanks. Um, I was just uh, gonna suggest that we might do a survey of where people want trash cans, where they don't have them or hotspot areas from residents and just have them do a, a survey for us that so we could collect information. And it was also brought up like with uh, uh, trash cans, like is it a bigger hassle for the sanitation workers to have these new cans? That was brought up. And I do notice that some of them are already deteriorating and rusting. I was surprised to see that. And also to have cans have been basically what, uh, Kendall said, confirmed these trash cans do get taken away if the sanitation department feels they're used improperly, which is, I believe, what happened to us because some apartment buildings don't take care of their residents' trash, so then they use the local trash can or somebody might dump there. So that's that's hard to take, you know, because of how much it affects a neighborhood when your trash can gets pulled. And they do pull them, and I believe that they do have a lot of discretion in where they go and don't go. Yeah. As I've seen for myself in person, all around my neighborhood, which is which gets quite trashed because of the surrounding businesses and apartment buildings. Yeah. So, a survey. I'm suggesting a survey at some point, and um, also I would like since Kendall seems to know about the uh, program in Park Slope where they have three trash cans and I noticed quite a bit of difference in the style of trash cans in Chinatown when I was there this last week. Um, I would like somebody from DSNY whoever supplies the trash cans to speak to us and see if there's some type of way that we might get um, like a bargain on a, a bigger order you know, with quite a lot of money coming down the pipeline to New York City, can we get more trash cans that way? And is there, like, how do they decide about these trash cans? Is there a, like, a, more, I'd like more detail about them. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Um, I certainly welcome and am eager to have folks take a leading role on some of these issues, whether it's a survey of the district or elsewhere. I, I do want to remind everybody that uh, in one of our prior meetings, when we discussed this topic, we talked about surveying the district and Martina uh, graciously agreed to do that. And I offered to help her. Um, so I covered South of Empire Boulevard and she covered North of Empire Boulevard. But if we want folks, if we want uh, other areas to be included in terms of these locations, then we need folks to come to the meeting and volunteer themselves to share the location of these high traffic areas because we can't do it. We are a small team but we're, and we're a mighty team, but we need more hands if we wanna do things in a, in a more comprehensive way. Um, so I'll, I'll stop with that and then bring it to Charlita and then I'm going to finish off and we'll go to the, the next agenda point. Hi, sorry. And I apologize for taking up a lot of airspace. This, 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 <laughs> um, I, I do commend the work that the committee is doing. I am 
I am offering, you know, my services. I, I gave my email address to Charlita at Gmail. Um, I have the email address, I guess, of whoever just sent the, um, the information to me. I am, I am very committed to this topic. And, you know, back in April, I organized the cleanup Flatbush. You got some of you may have participated or, you know, may have gotten the emails, just posted on Facebook. Um, so I'm all in on this. The, the thing that I wanted to ask, and it goes to Teresa's point, and I think a, a, just a couple of the things that other people have said, which is, is there a timing on this letter? Like, is there, is there, is there a time, like a deadline? Like, we need to get the letter to, you know, Rita Joseph by like X date, because it seems like there, there may be, you know, some other information that can go in, or I know that you were prioritizing, at least if I understood you at the beginning of the call, you said that you wanted to sort of prioritize the focus being on this, these pilot, um, these pilot trash cans, which I think is, is great. I guess the question that I have now, and we don't have to, obviously we don't have time to discuss it is, well, that is a thing we wanna press for, is that what we want to prioritize if that is a thing that in a best case scenario, we're gonna get in a year when Flatbush Avenue is a, you know, an abomination mm -hmm. like right now. And I personally would like to see new trash cans on those corners right now like that's the thing that seems to me that that is that can be much more immediate yes that if we get that yes we get more immediate relief than if we get yes to a pilot thing that maybe a year from now could work when the rats have completely taken over yeah that's a very good point so i'll answer that question there is no deadline in terms of getting it up to the council members i think originally our intention was let's do it early, let's get in there early, let's start the conversation early, they just came in in January, let's be one of the folks that they know, okay, this CB9 Environment Protection Committee, they're, they're working. Um, but there is no deadline. Uh, we will not be able to vote on this today because we do not have quorum. Um, Chair, I think we need to make some adjustments uh, well, actually, one of those one of those I know is a conversation we've had uh, with respect to that. So you can take that member off the roll. That okay. member can come off the roll. Okay. So so consider that member off the roll for right now. Uh, actually, as long as we, can I take one moment just to make a couple of clarifications? Uh, yeah, l yeah, and then I yeah. Okay. With respect to that, um, there you know I, I would probably offer that there is a little bit of time sensitivity with respect to this. Um, I would rather get it out sooner rather than later, as right now we are in the middle of the budget process. So making these asks or having these conversations with the council members gives us a chance, not a guarantee, but a chance that perhaps we can get it in with this budget cycle, because there are conversations that are happening at this time. So uh, if we can get our council members to champion that, uh, and I would also probably offer that we should probably add council member uh, Mealy, because she's actually that part of the district that um, some of the other residents have been talking about. So. You know, we have three council members who are, you know, represented, you know, who represent this district. So if we can get the three of them on there on board in terms of saying, listen, this is something that should be, you know, they can fight for that as part of the budget process. Um, if it doesn't go through, okay, it is what it is. At least they know that it's on, you know, it's top of mind for the next cycle when that starts, which does start relatively quickly too in the next few months. But hopefully we have a shot of trying to get it in this one. Um, because there are, there are adjustments that do happen between what we've asked for and then there's some horse trading that usually typically happens as part of the budget process. Do you know when that deadline is in terms of the, when does the budget process finish? Is that June? Voted on in June? Budget is approved, it's approved, uh, the end of the fiscal year, I have to get the dates right. The end of the fiscal year is June 30th. Yeah, the, the deal budget, should be done um, in mid-June. I mean, the mayor's yeah. preliminary well, budget comes out next, next week sometime, next Tuesday maybe. And then the, that becomes the baseline for discussions that follow. Right. So there, there are some things that can happen in there. So that means that we would want to get the letter out sooner rather than later, or at least get in the ear of the, of the council members at that point. Okay, that's helpful. That's helpful to know that that we do have a bit of a timeline. Um, 
And, you know, the other thing in terms of Flatbush and the cleanup of Flatbush. So this letter came out of agreed upon priorities that the committee discussed over the course of our meetings in September, October, November. We came up with four priorities. This was one of the priorities. I think that one of those four, I think that a little bit of the urgency other than what the chair just mentioned in terms of the budgetary process, a little bit of the urgency is that we have other priorities that we, we agreed to in September, October that we still need to get to. For example, the Spring Environmental Protection Fair, that's gonna be something concrete that we can do together uh, that won't spill into nine months from now or 12 months from now. So here's what I suggest. Um, I think this has been a good conversation. I'm glad to see greater participation and even a willingness to roll up our sleeves, because at the end of the day, it's not just about being in front of the screen, it's about rolling up our sleeves and, 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 and working on this. Um, I don't want to change the letter significantly because the more we change it, the more we open up a can of worms. And I would like to keep this thing simple and clear. So, but the, the, the point about making sure Super Rice is on board is an important one and uh, making sure that he's copied is an important one, as is the point about uh, sending it to con con Councilwoman uh, Mealy as well. So I would suggest that we hold off on discussing this letter anymore until uh, I can touch base with Super Rice and we can also revise it to include Council Member Mealy. And then I think some other discussions in terms of the uh, 10 trash cans locations for that, where would that come from? Uh, I think that's something that we can do offline as well. Um, but then let's pick up this letter next month in March with the intention then of truly and really voting on it, uh, not just in our committee, but hopefully if we pass voting on it in the general board meeting. If that sounds good to you, can you just put a thumbs up or a head nod so we have some sort of an idea? Does that not sound good to anyone? Well, I, I guess, I don't, what are you, <laughs> does it sound good that we don't change the letter? I mean, what are you asking? What is the thing that, that, that it sounds, what sounds good? Just asking if we can, if we can, at the end, if we can uh, put this aside for this evening and then revisit okay. it next week or next month. Okay. Okay. I'll make a few of the adjustments in terms of uh, Super Rice and Councilwoman Mealy, and then we'll figure out this garbage location uh, question, and then we can discuss this again in March. The last thing I'll say about the letter is that we will not allow uh, the perfect to be the enemy of the good. In other words, there are going to be a lot of things that we want in the letter, and we will not be able to get all of it in. Uh, we need to have, we need to put in place a process that takes us one step further towards the vision that this committee set out when we got together September, October, November to beautify our, our community, to protect against uh, the effects of climate change and to be mindful of some of the sanitation issues. So if this letter can do that and take us one step in that direction, even if it's not perfect, and that will be a win, I think, for our committee. No matter if the pilot gets picked up by council members or not, I think it'll be helpful. So I'll end with that. And then um, I'd like to kick it over to Teresa for an update on the Spring Environmental Fair. Um, the Environmental Protection Fair is scheduled to be May, Saturday, May. 14th, um, where I selected a location, which is uh, usually isn't used, we're trying to branch out, and that would be Mark and Jason's playground, which is on Sterling Street, uh, also borders on Empire, uh, off of um, Nostrand Avenue. There's a pretty good sized playground there with a, a lot of trees. And I don't know if anybody's looked at it. I've gone over there a few times 
to check it out. So uh, we just need to work out some of the details, get the permit approved. I need to get the budget done. I um, I did contact uh, Maple Street Garden. I don't know if you, there, it's a community garden um, that was established in the last maybe five years on Maple Street and I've been involved with and talked to them about uh, one thing that I want to have is possibly a kind of plant giveaway. So I talked to them about plants. I, I helped them get some plants a few years ago and wanted to find out where they got those from. And there's a program through Grow NYC that um, I found out about and BBG as well. So they, they, they sell bulk plants. Um, like we got them for our uh, Sullivan Ludlum Stoddard uh, group as well for, so that's plants that we can get for it. Uh, Rad Academy has agreed to come if we get a table for them. Um, you know, I've, I'm, there's a few more organizations that I'll, I'll contact as it gets closer and, uh, you know, we figure out more of what we want to do. I hope our new member, Charlita, will be involved and is interested because I, I, I don't know, we, we, it's up to us, like what we want to have at the fair regarding environmental protection. I know Kristen had uh, suggested rain barrels and, you know, our, we could hopefully have composting there. Maybe Grow NYC can participate in a larger way since they're right down the street on Sullivan and we have contacts with them. So it's just, I'm just looking out for what we could do at the fair to make it fun, maybe include a, a band, maybe a DJ, maybe show a movie at night. I don't know if we could do all those things. I have a large amount and I'm, and I'm open to suggestions and support of any kind that anybody wants to give. So that's, that's where we are. I'm thinking of times like t t 11, 12 to like three, five-ish. I know you, I don't know for parks, uh, but I know for the street, you have to have an hour ahead and an hour behind. So just work, trying to work out some details. Any questions? Is there a date? I'm sorry, I missed. Is there already a date selected? Oh yeah, so Saturday, May 14th is the, the date that we've, we're hoping for. May 14th. And do you know Mark and Jason's playground? Do you know where that is? I, I, I don't, not, not by that name. Um, you said it was on Sterling and. It's just, it's just off of um, No Strand. It's next to the school. It's you next to that... MS 61. Yeah, right MS 61 old school, Lefish Junior High School. Okay. It borders. It's on Sterling Street and Empire between Nostrand and New York Avenues. Old school Leffage Junior High School renamed IS61 Atwell. Cross from the 71 precinct. Yeah, it's pretty close to the precinct. Now you know, precinct. Right no, across. the precinct is, I know where the precinct is. Right, well, um, come on down to Nostrand and then there's the school in the park. Okay. Yeah, there's an entrance on, on Empire as well. If you walk across the street on across the street from the precinct to the school and you just make a right, it's it's right there. It's sort of hidden, but it's pretty big as well. Okay. And it's it extends into like the this I noticed the school um pretty big areas are open for like soccer and it's it's concrete though, but the, the park itself has a lot of good trees. I thought, you know. Be nice to have some trees around us for an environmental fair. Wait a minute. The, the school, the school that's on the corner of Empire yes. and New, New York, York Avenue. Yes. Correct. There's a park somewhere around there. Right. On, on there adjacent to it. It's attached. Do, yes. Do you know the Carver Bank on Nostrand and Empire? Uh yes. Okay, so there's an apartment building right next to Carver Bank, and right next to that apartment building is the playground. Okay, I, yeah, all right. Yeah, we're trying to do things in neighborhoods that don't normally get services like this. Usually it's in Prospect Park or, you know, 
So yeah, and Notion Avenue, like uh, Charlotte is concerned for Flatbush Avenue, is notoriously filthy. The south side of Empire Boulevard, and you all know, or if you don't, um, I'll let you know about the horrific shooting Christmas Eve and um, New Year's Eve, where f there were five people shot, one fatally. So you know the cleanliness, the cleaning up. And um, bringing more uh, uh, care to this neighborhood is very, very important. It's notoriously fil filthy, Charlita. And it's a lot of uh, um, undesirables and uh, illegal, horrific things going on there. So it would be nice to have it open up. Actually, PAL does the summer program in that park. And there are a lot of... Uh, events that have been held in that park. And it is important. So uh, um, having said that, Christian, I certainly would hope that you would include as part of enforcement uh, my uh, uh, suggestion about the commercial businesses also being enforced to clean up. It's very important that they do that. Is that the part that's slated for a makeover? Sorry, Kendall, I didn't hear you. I said, is that the park that's slated for a makeover? There were a bunch of them announced a couple months ago, and I thought that was one of them. I'm not sure. Let's hope so. Maybe you I'll have to double check. I believe you're correct, though. I think Mark and Jason was one of, was one of them. Uh, so I just want to check on the timing of that, if the park is uh, still open. I don't know what the you know, timing of the work is, but. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. I had no idea. Where would you find that information? Um, <laughs> good question. You, you know, I would, I would probably just recommend just create the plan along with the dates and, you know, the board offices that once, once the committee has adopted it and once the board has adopted it, we'll, we'll work with the, the committee to, to, to get all those permits. And if there's an issue or a challenge, we'll, we'll, we'll come back and we'll discuss. Yeah, we have. So it, it's slated to be like redone. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. I hope they're not cutting down trees. You knew about that, Fred? I know they're doing the makeover. I had no, I've heard nothing about cutting down trees. It's probably about refurbish, refurbishing some of the equipment. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if they're going to put new mats or I'm not sure what the plan calls for, but I, I don't understand it to be something where they're cutting down or taking away trees or anything like that. I did want to actually go to you, Fred, because I saw your hand is raised. Is there a, a, other comments that you'd like to share on it? You know, just very briefly. Uh, one, this is really, really, really fantastic. I just wanted to, to do a quick PSA with regards to, um, I did hear the point come up a couple of times with regards to trash um, being in front of uh, establishments, uh, trash cans that are coming up missing. The one thing that I mean for, for, you know, I would ask for everyone to do is when you see those things happen, Please let the district office know because if we won't, we don't, you know, we don't know what we don't know. So if we know that there was a can there and all of a sudden there's not one, we're not going to be able to track it or do anything in terms of finding out what happened if, you know, if we have no information. So uh, I know oftentimes we say call 311, but if you call 311, also please call the district office along with the reference number so that way we can track that request as well. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Any more questions about the fair? Any more comments, suggestions, anything? A comment, Teresa, I think it's great. I think it's gonna be a fantastic fair that's really gonna bring the community together for an important cause in the, uh, the protection of our environment. And a lot of the vendors you suggested would be terrific. Uh, the most important thing is to submit that document that you've now downloaded into numbers, the numbers program and submit it to the district managers and to CB9, because that will start the process of the uh, of our of CB9 working on this, securing permits. And if there is an issue with that playground and location, then uh, we'll know that about that once the district managers have it and can move on that. Teresa, I'd like to volunteer my time to help you with the fear. Um, in whatever capacity that you may may need as a community resident that I am. 
I sent an email to um, the person who sent me the uh, letters Letter. and asking how I get put on the committee list and how I get information on the committee. But I, and I assume that that'll be an answer. But for everybody on the call, my email is charlita at gmail.com. Great. Thank you both. Thanks both for your interest. Um, so, Teresa, next step then, just once you fill it out, send it to me. I can take a look and help you with anything that we still have questions about, and we can get into district managers. Um, I'm happy to take a look at that this week or next week. I think you're on mute. I'm sorry, you're on mute, Teresa. I'm just hoping that... Um... It would be good if we could fill it out like together online, like filling it out and then sending it makes it a little bit difficult, but all right. Okay. Um, I'll take a look after you filled out. So that way we make sure that things are in a row and I can help plug in any gaps, but it, it'll, it'll be submitted on uh, electronically. Okay, so moving forward then to the next item on the agenda, which is public discussion. Um, I want to open up the floor, starting with Yuning, and then after Yuning, totally open up the floor to anyone else that would like to speak. We're going to limit public discussion to 10 minutes. So at 8.30, we'll stop public discussion. Chris, I'm sorry, but I, I thought I saw Pierre uh, Albert had his um, hand up, so I'm not sure if you want to have a question, last question, or if he's doing public commentary. But he's been up for a minute. Okay. Thanks, Fred. I, I, Pierre, I just saw your hand went up. Do you, do you mind if we start with you, Ning? I know that we spoke, uh, she mentioned early on in this meeting that she'd speak at public discussion. Is, do you mind if she goes first or is there something you'd like to raise now? It's perfectly fine. It's okay. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, I'll keep it brief. Uh, thank you all. Uh, so I, here's my second time to, the, to meet the committee members. Um, and uh, but I can introduce myself again, just for the folks who joined uh, for the first time. I um, graduated from Columbia. I studied public health and urban planning, and I'm really interested in sanitation issues. I'm a uh, community planning fellow from the city uh, found for the New York City of New York. So I'm being assigned to the community board to help you uh, just to uh, work on the sanitation issues and. Uh, um, I've been working on just to understand the sanitation issues from the DSNY side, also from the community side as well, because it's uh, it kind of goes both ways. Um, and I talked to Dante. Dante has provided a tour to the community and a list of places uh, where you uh, folks has re uh, reported uh, like trash overflow and uh, uh, straight cleanliness cleaning issues. Um, and I plotted those, I uh, have a map here um, that I can share. Can you guys see the map? Um, just to wanted to share, so this is first part of my work uh, as part of me understanding uh, the sanitation services available for the community. Um, you can see where the litter baskets are uh, that's this is from the New York City open data source. Uh, this is supposed to be DSNY litter baskets. And this and where the food scrap drop sites are, looks like there are like three located in the neighborhood. And the blue uh, and those are the dots are uh, sites and streets where Dante has pointed out that folks are seeing uh, trash flow and uh, street cleanliness issues. I just wanted to share this with you guys and see if you know like if you have more sites to add on and things to uh, reflect based on those locations see the patterns um because i've been i see i think there's some discussions on where the trash baskets need to be placed uh, i wonder if this is helpful information where kind of other informations that you think will be helpful that i can i should be add to the map later um and that yeah, as that information can also just help the committee to understand the sanitation services in general. Um, 
yeah, I just wanted to, okay, uh, sorry, I will move on because I have this really quick comment. Uh, Kendall just mentioned that he is part of the uh, SK, uh, BK swap. I actually just met with uh, Oliver, the director. Um, I think they expressed very uh, interest in helping committee board nine uh, in terms of understanding orientation services and just connecting issues with available service services in the city as well. Um, but we can kind of discuss uh, that later as we uh, detail the issue, uh, figure out what actually needed uh, from the community side. Um, yeah, for example, like what uh, I think one member mentioned, what kind of enforcements were like needs to be, where the community board needs more enforcement from the, for, for the commercial businesses, as we see on this map, or the leader baskets are mostly in the commercial over, over corridors, um, but probably those sites are not being enforced well. So what, maybe what kind of information do people need to help uh, with enforcement? I think we can get that. Maybe swap would be a wonderful uh, um, so, uh, community, like one of organization to provide, to help provide that kind of information if uh, we, we can, if we can um, have that relationship with a swap. And I think they would be happy to provide those kind of educational, like um, informational session uh, to us. Um, yeah, that's just one example. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share part of my work and uh, pick you guys' brain, brain uh, to get some feedback. Uh, see how my work can facilitate the discussion. Um, also, I would like to have, uh, yeah, just being helpful. If I may jump in, I think this is really uh, useful, and that's something we've we've mentioned in our in the beginning in terms of our vision and and mission is to use data to inform some of our work. Um, so I really appreciate this. I just had a clarifying question. Can you remind us what identified place? Yes, so identified, yes, of course. Uh, sorry, I kind of uh, skipped that. The, the identified place, I asked Dante to provide a list of streets and uh, uh, locations where folks have identified with uh, trash overflow and street cleanliness, cleanliness issues. So those are the ones that highlighted in blue. Um, mm, okay, that's very, very helpful. Yeah, that's yeah. very helpful. Are there are other places that uh, I should add onto my analysis. Um, or is this pretty accurate? Also, like what kind of patterns that you see in those neighborhoods? Are they are those mostly commer commercial, which is shown on map? Those are indeed commercial overlay zones. Um, so just commercial corridors. Um, so we can kind of see what patterns are out there. Are is it mostly from the litter litters from commercial businesses or um, residential like buildings are misusing uh, the SNY trash bins? Um, yeah, yeah, oh. that's, that's a larger conversation. But I I think that these these places where... track with these places track with uh, the areas that I've seen. And I, I want to open up the floor to Teresa. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the map, just looking at some of the areas that I, I know. And I see like um, the trash can that I've talked about on the corner of um, Sullivan and Rogers isn't there. There isn't a mark for that particular trash can that's made our life so much better. The area, one of the areas on... Um, Sullivan and uh, Bedford by Ebbets Field, like some of these areas are the way they are because of their, their large buildings, you know, mm -hmm. that dealing with their uh, trash disposal mm -hmm. so well. And there could definitely be some more cans on McKeever and Sullivan and in that area, and as well as on Empire. Um, the park where we're having the fair isn't isn't on this map at all. Um, I don't see that. I could I could look. You know, it's I'm looking at it on my phone and zooming in, mm -hmm. but um, I would love to get a printout and uh, look at things with more detail. I know the 
Empire Boulevard can be a problem, but some of that was cleaned up, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, like absolutely. I think it would be great. I, I would love to share this map with you guys. And if you wanted to add, a, uh, add notes to it and send back to me, uh, it would be really helpful information for me too. Yeah, it's a lovely map and I really appreciate it. I love data like this and examining. So thank you very much for creating this and, and I'll be, I'd love to help you. I'm sure other people will as well. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice thank to meet you too. Thanks, Teresa. Kendall? Um, hello again, Yuning. Saw you Monday night. Um, so tell us how long you are with us, and are you with us uh, f uh, full time, five days a week, or what's the what's the what's the structure of your fellowship? Um, so I started working, I think, since uh, since September, since October. Uh, it was part time then because I was just still in school. Now I graduated and just have a lot of free time now to work on this. Um, yeah, m m very flexible right now, uh, mostly, yeah. Um, but my timeline is, uh, so I think the final report uh, or the final deliverable is due in April uh, before before May. Mm -hmm. So you're only with us a couple more months then? Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's, that's um, just helpful in terms of thinking about. Yeah. But we'd love to, uh, yeah, it seems like, uh, uh, Kendall, you have a lot of experience. So if, you, if you're available, uh, you also mentioned that you have connection to the SNY. We'd love to uh, hear your experience and thoughts on this. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. OK, uh, I'm going to, I'd like to move forward to Pierre Albert, Teresa, I see your hand is raised though. Is that what? from before? Yeah, I, I thought I put it down, sorry. Okay, um, Yuning, this was a, a great little presentation, really appreciate it and, and, and thank you for your participation. And I hope that you can swap emails with some of the folks on this call afterwards. Yeah, of course. I just don't really have the, uh, is it, I guess I can ask Khalid later if there's a like shared uh, list of contacts. Um, yeah, I, I can send this to Khalid first. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. I'd like to kick it over to Pierre. Hi, yeah, Pierre. Um, I work at the governor's office of storm recovery and do a lot of work um, in my church community and the community at large. Um, is it possible if I can also get a copy of that letter that's being sent over to um, Council member um, Rita Joseph, I'm just very um, interested in the topic of the of receptacles. Um, as a community resident, I do see the see a need for um, more of them. Um, and as Carlita mentioned, I think I pronounced your name correctly, right? Carlita. Charlita. 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 Close. Sorry. Sorry. Um, I do sort of see the situation getting out of control especially on like East Flatbush, like, you know, Lennox Road, um, Treasure Avenue. So just interested in, in, in seeing the letter um, as, as well. Oh, so my email, sorry, <laughs> albertpierre, um, the number two at gmail.com. Albertpierre, number two at gmail.com. Yes. Thank you. Albert Pierre two at gmail.com. I'm sorry, that's what you said, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy to send it to you. Uh, just know, you know, it's not, it's just a draft right now. There'll be more edits to it. So uh, I wouldn't share it with, you know, council yeah. members. Okay. No, it's, this is just for me as, as a community resident. <laughs> cool. No problem. Um, this then concludes the public discussion. I do think that under any other business, we need to just uh, adopt the minutes from last meeting, which our district managers helpfully sent out earlier. Uh, are there any adjustments that need to be made to the minutes from the prior Environmental Protection Committee meeting? I, I, I didn't get that. I wasn't able to read it, so I, I, can't, I can't vote, sorry. It's okay. Check the email that Khalid or the district manager sent a few days ago. I don't have it up in front of me, but the, the minutes are in that. 
The minutes were sent with the uh, agenda and as well as the notice of the meeting as well. Any other business? So seeing no uh, adjustments to the minutes, then we will keep the minutes as is. Uh, are there any, are there any, um, is there any other business, any other burning issues that we need to discuss? I, I just want to say that um, I heard from Martina and she's ill. So that's why she's not here. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Okay, uh, quick question for the chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, do we have to entertain a motion to adopt the minutes from last month? Uh, from a parliamentary procedure standpoint, you called for it. If you hear no objections, then common consent. You just call common consent. Okay, great, thank you. Um, well, I'd like to entertain a motion then to adjourn the meeting. Second. <laughs> All right. Very good. So with that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, we'll circle back next month in March to continue this conversation around the letter. And um, Teresa, I'll work with you on the on the uh, budget request. And Fred, I'd love to chat with you too about the replacement of garbages uh, whenever we can find some time. Absolutely, just let me know it's good for you. Okay. And send, I sent the map, map, the map to Khalid and uh, he can share with you all. Okay, great. And I just have a question. Is the, do you guys talk in the interim or is it just like, all right, we talk again in a month or? Uh, the next thing will be the executive committee meeting, which is going to be on Tuesday. That's open to the public. It's always nice to stop in, but I'd say that the other one will be the general board meeting. But in terms of our specific committee, we won't meet again until or discuss until uh, March. If there are specific issues that you uh, want to follow up on, we t typically touch base via email with just that individual, but we don't have any other formal discussions until next month. Oh yeah, sorry, that's what I meant. Not like a gathering of the whole group, but just like the work continuing, if there are comments on the letter, if there's, you know, whatever it is, is, is there a distribution list where people can, are, do they email and are they just like in touch with each other over the course of the, the month or no? Uh, it's more one-off. So it's, if you're championing a certain project or you have a question yeah. about a certain project, then you email that person and yeah. talk to this. Right. And I will get the, the list from the community board or, I, right now I can't email anybody because I don't have any information and I'm not on the list, although I've requested to be on it, so. Hi, Charlita. I just sent you, <clears throat> excuse me, an email from our board office email. So you do have our contact. You should have. Have you? Okay. I, I, yes. The, the one that I responded to or you responded to my to my email. Uh, give me one second, because I actually forwarded you. Yeah, I got the letter. Excellent. Perfect. So, so you have I just responded to that asking to be because you indicate that you send around emails and you send around like I just mm -hmm. want to make sure that I am now on the committee. And anybody who wants my assistance can reach me. And if I have, you know, information to impart, or if I want to raise my hand to help somebody, I can reach out to that that person. And right now, I'm just saying I don't have a way to do that. Oh, I think she can. You, she can join. That would be great. Yeah, uh, Charlita, I will forward the um the Google form that we have for app, uh, committee applications for you, and you can fill that out, and we'll process that for you. Okay. Okay, great. That'd be great. Thank you, guys. Didn't mean to lengthen the meeting. That's oh, okay. No worries. <laughs> it's all good stuff. Thanks, everybody, for your participation. I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Look forward to seeing you in March, if not next week. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, have a good one.